Okay, so hello and welcome to the first episode of Cyber Potato when I'll be teaching you about development and web stuff. And in this first episode, I'd like to talk to you about the IDEs because uh, you actually can write whole web page using a notepad but it isn't the most sufficient and effective way so um, there are many IDEs that uh, you can use one of those the first that I actually encountered in my career is WebStorm. Uh, it's been developed by JetBrains and these guys have a lot of IDs particularly for every single language that I know. For example, if you're developing in uh, Ruby, you can use RubyMy uh, and of course there's one for Python? I think. Yeah, so you can pick your poison. Uh, if you'd like to go with JavaScript, I'll recommend WebServe. Uh, but to be honest, I don't use it. Why is that? Well, first and the most important thing is you have to buy it. And it's not like it's super cheap. Okay. Um, the second reason is uh, this is a big product and it has a lot of features that you actually want to use. So it's like when I was using it, I was using about 20, maybe 30% of available options. So it's not really the, the best choice because um, the more options there is uh, the slower the ID next example that uh, I found out to be really good and minimalistic is uh, Sublime Text Pre uh, Sublime is very very fast it's written in C++ I think uh, it's really scalable it has a lot of extensions you go to package control and for example would like to add any kind of package for react or I don't know Python there's a package for almost everything um, what else oh yeah uh, it's it's free uh, but you can also pay for a license which is good because well someone put a lot of effort into it it's available for um, I believe all OS's I mean Windows, Linux and Mac OS uh, it has auto completion features uh, moving to definitions uh, command palette it's customizable uh, you can change the themes, uh, the colors, and so on. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really really good, and you can start using it right away. Just download and install it. The second ID that I encountered was uh, Atom, uh, and it's really really fine product. Uh, it's free. It's being developed by guys from GitHub. Um, it also has autocomplete features, is really really good um, when developing for web, but not only that. Uh, there's a special version of this product called Nuclite IO, or just Nuclite, uh, that is tailored to use for React Native and iOS. Um, I believe it's been developed by Facebook, yes, yes. But it's been archived, okay. 
The one good thing uh, about Atom is that it is open source and developed by the community. So you can go anytime you want and check out how it's actually being built. Uh, what are the problems? What pull requests are about to come into the repository? And actually, how it's being written? Uh, it's being built using Electron platform, which is a platform where you can use JavaScript language to build the desktop apps. Uh, the one drawback is it's not as fast as Sublime Text, but still still fast enough for, for standard development. Uh, but my go-to editor that I see most of the people using for development is Visual Studio Code and for the most of the time that's the one that I am using. Uh, it's built for almost uh, every OS. Um, it's free and it also can be found as open source on GitHub. So um, you'll see me using that in upcoming videos. Uh, it's also scalable, uh, very customizable. Uh, you can find plugins for almost everything and every single language or library that that uh, we'd like to use. It's also built uh, using Electron, so yeah, not, not so fast. Uh, the one honorable mention in that list is Oni or Oni, Oni, I don't know. How, how to name it, and only two. So, uh, only is being developed also open source or was developed to bring the mm, the feel uh, from the Vim editor into modern UI and into a desktop app, and it came out pretty good. But as you can tell. It wasn't, well, it wasn't developed uh, to the full version. Uh, it was also using Electron, and in the middle of development, guys decided to switch to build Oni2 uh, using Reverie, uh, which is uh, another solution using uh, ReasonML to build the desktop apps. And they're, they're starting pretty much from from scratch with this but well it's not ready to use obviously but it's something that you definitely would like to keep your eyes on so yeah definitely go to those guys and give them a SAR on github they will appreciate it uh, there are also solutions um, used as um, online editors and here we have two that I tend to use which is Stagblitz and uh, it's really really good is it has those templates for almost every single project in the web that you'd like to build like RxJS, ReactJS, Angular um, and so on and what is really nice is as you can tell this looks really similar to Visual Studio Code and that's great because you feel at home right away. Uh, what, is also, uh, what is also really really nice is the auto refresh feature. If you save the file you will see that it does refresh automatically uh, and it's great but I don't know any big company using it to build um, big products so maybe treat it as something to test the stuff or, or share an idea or check out how something works uh, and the second one that is also popular 
but way simpler uh, is a code pen. Uh, if you'd like to compare those, you see that here we have files, and file tree, and file structure, while here we have only this working i.e. areas. But uh, if you'd like to share some simple code or that stuff, this is also viable. Yeah, so we have uh, HTML, CSS, and uh, JS. Uh, and as we can already tell, it's definitely working. So yeah, uh, it's also a good idea to go there and uh, sign up for an account. Uh, you can also explore a whole lot of fantastic code pens created by by other people. And it's always good opportunity to learn something uh, something nice about CSS or drawing with CSS from other guys. Okay, but uh, as I told you before, uh, I'll be using um, Visual Studio Code, uh, which is the best for me right now. It has, it has lots of features. Uh, first, let's take a look at the sidebar. We have the Explorer which is the view you'll be spending most of your time in. Uh, you have a file structure here. Here is a summary of open editors to left and right. Um, and here at the bottom is an outline, uh, which is a way for you to navigate your file really fast because here you have uh, markers for uh, all your classes, or functions and all the fine properties. Uh, next is global search. So if I search for something here, here I can see all of the results and I can jump to them with a click. Uh, then there's the source control and git and I'll get to that more in depth if I, when I'll be explaining the source control. Debugger, we'll look into that. Extensions, yeah. So uh, this is really, really important as I mentioned that Visual Studio Code is really, really full of extensions and packages. Uh, for example, if I like to write something, uh, some Flutter app, I can just install Flutter package and that's great. But also if I like to find maybe a new color team. I can also find it there. I li really like North. Props to the guys that that uh, prepared that uh, team extension. Let's just install that. Okay. Uh, whoops. Sorry. Install. Okay. And the next one, well, it's this is custom extensions from GitLab. Uh, let's go back to the important parts. And this is, uh, one is changing the editor layout to, for example, two columns. And now we can have files side by side. It's really, really great, especially if you have a big monitor, uh, as I do. Um, the other important thing that you'll see me using is terminal because, uh, well, maybe not from the very start, but it will be useful to have the terminal right here with you all the time. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, of course, the navigation through files. If I have something like an ES6 model uh, I can just press control and click and it will take me maybe let me close that it will take me right to the file with that module uh, 
uh, it also has um, auto complete features. And what I mean by that is, uh, for example, I have hash password defined here. And if I start typing, I see that Visual Studio Code, best to its knowledge, is trying to help me out with, um, with finding out what actually I would like to type. And then if I press Enter, I just get it. Plain and simple. Uh, okay. Just that's important. Okay. So yeah, uh, basically that's it. That's the summary uh, for the IDs I use or use. Um, choose the one that suits you and feels the best. I'm using Visual Studio Code, but it's just a matter of personal preference. If you find something is better for you, don't bother learning something that doesn't feel good. Um, yeah, and that's about it. So, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!